What was your reaction to that? I, I must admit, I was somewhat baffled last night. Well, Christian probably wanted the big reveal. He wanted to be the person uh, availing us of the news rather than us getting ahead of him. But um, um, mixed emotions, because I think certainly the guy that they've got in there um, has credentials of success when he manages in Spain and manages in Europe. We had a difficult time in Arsenal. I think some of the, the manner in which the media went after him was a little bit unfair and parodied the way he spoke. But he did lose control of certain players. He did lose control of the direction. Uh, albeit his win record at Arsenal is better than his win record at Villarreal. Um, it's probably interesting to see that I would imagine, I would, has, I would hasten to guess... That, that when he had this approach from Newcastle last year, there wasn't a release clause in his contract. And I would wager you that all of a sudden this five or six million euro release clause was put in there as a compromise between him and the owner. Because if you remember, when he was talking to Amanda Stavely, deal was done, he was going to Newcastle. Out of the ether came his owner going, uh, sit down, shut up, I don't think you're going anywhere. I remember that. And, that's, yeah. and I think yeah. probably what happened then was a release clause was probably inserted into his contract, which is basically, OK, we're not having this nonsense anymore. If you do go in the future, an opportunity comes, then we're going to get paid for it and yes. we'll protect us. We'll also give you an opportunity to go if someone meets the release clause. So here we have Unai Emery, um, that is undoubtedly a good co undoubtedly a good coach. Otherwise, he wouldn't have got to manage PSG. He wouldn't have got to win four European trophies. He wouldn't get a club in Villarreal that spends very little money to punch its weight in La Liga. And because he had a moment in time in a dysfunctional, slightly dystopian Arsenal... But that should be the benchmark. I don't know how he's going to settle at Aston Villa. Is that a coup for them, though? I mean, Simon, he's a four times Europa League winner. Three with Seville, one only, with Villarreal. Only if he's successful. And there's a question mark over there whether he will be. I mean, Graham was going down some rabbit hole of how much Stephen Gerrard has spent, not mm. making any sense whatsoever, because he hasn't spent a lot of money in comparison with what other people have spent. Even if you take out the net spend, Stephen Gerrard spent about 60 million quid. And the players that he signed weren't pups. You know, the boy, um, uh, you know, Dendoka is, Dendoka is not a pup, and a few of the other players are not pups. Louise is not pups, and they just haven't been available at times due, due to injury. So Stephen Gerrard's failings were his management capabilities and his ability to set up a side not the money he spent and not the players he bought as an owner you look at the players and go the hell did you buy that player for when Trevor Francis insisted I buy Adi Akinbaye of course I went to him 18 months later what did we buy this guy for no, sure. not, not what sure. we're losing games for so but, going to Unai Emery yeah. he has there's a good group of players there that are talented whether Tyrone Mings is the full package and whether he played for Stephen Gerrard or whether he didn't or whether there was ways that Stephen Gerrard I thought that Stephen Gerrard was tactically uh, out of kilter with the players that he had and I think that ultimately he got now what was inevitably coming to him whether it was this month or in three months time I think the same thing would have happened now Unai Emery gets a group of players like Villarreal in a very different league at a very different time to perform at a very high level both in Europe and in the leagues that they operate in can he do this with a football club like Aston Villa that quite frankly at times is as well healed as Arsenal in terms of the size and scale of Aston Villa, yeah. the expectation of its fan base, and, and the soon ownership, to the be... Owners, the owners. But then again, we make this argument about how ambitious the owners are. They are. They but, are. They, but they are, Jim, but they have spent... I know Jack Grealish queers the pitch, but they've spent £100 million in three seasons on transfer fees net. That is not... When you've got a turnover of £180 million a year, which is Aston Villa have got, this is not groundbreaking stuff from the Villa owners. But they publicly say, we are very ambitious. We need Villa Talks, to be back at the top. Talk. Wes Eden's got a hold of me. The day they went up to the Premier League, That's three years said, ago. look, massive expectation here. The sky's the limit. That's was three years ago. And if you look at the fact that they've gone... I know their wage bill will be high, but if you and so is everyone's wage bill in the Premier League. If you look at what they've actually spent, and I know it gets skewed by Jack Grealish, but that's not the point. They wouldn't have bought the players they bought after Jack Grealish was sold if they hadn't got Jack Grealish money. So they, so they, bought, they spent £100 million on players after Jack Grealish, went with £100 million of Jack Grealish's money. So the net spend for Villa... Albeit they lost 90 million quid in 2020 or 1920 and they lost 32 million in 2021, they have not really backed up the notion that you're availing us of that we are going to set a, a real opportunity in the Premier League. They haven't done that. But they're not all talk, surely. So we just need massively nobody, wealthy guys in their own nobody right. That owns a surely Unai Emery no, matches that Nobody profile. that owns a Premier League football club that's absorbed losses of £90 million in one season, £30 million in another are all talk. But there is a scale of talk. They told you that they have huge ambitions to go after the Premier League. Well, they haven't backed that up to date with the spend pattern on players, and it's been underpinned 50% of their spend pattern by the disposal of arguably their best player. Have they got the right manager to match their 
ambition. Um, this fella, he's a big winner in Europe. Well, he folded. I would suggest they have. Well, he folded like a cheap deck chair the last time he was in the Premier League. Right, so we have yet to see whether that experience is, you know, is that fair, Simon? Well, I think so because yeah. I think he was flaky at the end. I think he lost control of the dressing room. I think he lost control of the mentality in the club, and he lost control of his representation in the media. Now, in all of those things, those are the three component parts of a manager's success: managing the players, making sure that the fans are on side, and handling the media. Yeah. And he lost all three. Now, you go away, you rebuild, you recalibrate, you come back a different animal. They won't do to him this time round what they did to him last time round. Yeah. But notwithstanding that, the Premier League is an animal that will eat you if you're not at it, on it and across it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk sport.